Hello all and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we get started, I'm going to say our customary blessing. Blessed art thou Adonai, Eloheinu, King of the Earth, who has sanctified us with his commandments, commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Adonai, Eloheinu, sweeten the words of your Torah in our mouths and in the mouths of all your people of Israel. May we and our offspring, the offspring of your people, the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed you, Adonai, who teaches Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, <coughs> Adonai Eloheinu, King of the Universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Adonai, giver of the Torah. May Adonai bless you and keep watch over you. May Adonai make his presence to enlighten you, may he be kind to you. May Adonai bestow favor on you and grant you peace. <coughs> today is the first read of Shemot names. Torah portion for today is Exodus 1 1 through 6 1. It's gonna be a doozy. <coughs> These are the names of the sons of Israel who came to Egypt with Jacob, each with his, uh, with his household Reuben, Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Zebulun. And Benjamin, Dan, Naphtali, Gad, and Asher. All the descendants of Jacob were seventy persons. Joseph was already in Egypt. Then Joseph died, and all his brothers and all his <coughs> and all that generation. But the people of Israel were fruitful and increased greatly. They multiplied and grew exceedingly strong, so that the land was filled with them. <coughs> Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph, and he said to his people, Behold, the people of Israel are too mighty for us. Come, let us deal shrewdly with them, lest they multiply, and if war break out, they join our enemies and fight against us and escape from the land. Therefore they set taskmasters over them to afflict them with heavy burdens. They built for the Pharaoh's stored cities, <coughs> Pithom and Ramses. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied, and the more they spread abroad. And the Egyptians were in dread of the people of Israel. So they ruthlessly made the people of Israel work as slaves, and made their lives bitter and hard service. <coughs> and more in all kinds of work in the field. And all their work, they ruthlessly made them work as slaves. Then the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shifra, and the other Pa. When you serve as midwife to the Hebrew women and see them on the birthstool, if it is a son, you shall kill him, but if it is his daughter, she shall live. But the midwives feared Elohim and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but let the male children live. So the king of Egypt called the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this? And let the male children live. The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So the Elohim dealt well with the midwives, and the people multiplied and grew strong. And because the midwives feared Elohim, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every son that is born to the Hebrews you shall cast into the Nile, but you shall let every daughter live. <coughs> now a man from the house of Eli Levi went and took as his wife a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that his, he was a fine child, she said to him, Oh, she hid him three months. But she could hide him no longer. She took him, she took for him a basket made of bulrushes, and dabbed it with bit, bitumen and pitch. And she put the child in it and placed it among the reeds of the river bank, and her sister stood at a distance to know what would be done to him. Now the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river while her young woman walked beside the river. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her woman, and she took it. When she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby was crying. She took pity on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. <laughs> then her sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call you a nurse for the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? The Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the girl went and called the, the child's mother. And the Pharaoh's daughter came to her. Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I'll give you your wages. So the woman took <coughs> the child and nursed him. When the child grew older, 
She brought him in the Pharaoh. She brought him to Pharaoh's daughter. And he became her son. She named him Moses because she said, I drew him out of the water. One day when Moses had grown up, he went out to his people and looked at their burdens. And he saw an Egyptian beating a Hebrew, one of his people. He took this way and that, seeing no one. He struck down the Egyptian and hit him in the sand. And when he went out the next day, behold, two Hebrews were struggling together. And he said to the man in the wrong, Why do you strike your companion? He answered, Who made you prince and judge over us? Do you mean to kill me as you killed the Egyptian? And Moses was afraid and thought, Surely the thing is known. When Pharaoh heard of it, he sought to kill Moses, but Moses fled from Pharaoh and stayed in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Now the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their flock. The shepherds came and drove them away, but Moses stood up and saved them the water and watered their flock. When they came home to their father rule, he said, How is it that you have come home so soon today? They said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds and even drew water for us and watered the flock. He said to his daughters, Then where is he? Why have you left the men? Call him that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses his daughter Zephora. Zipporah. He gave birth to his son, and he called his name Gershom. For he said, I have been so a sojourner in a foreign land. During those many days, the king of Egypt died. And the people of Israel groaned because of their slavery and cried out for help. Their cry for rescue from slavery came up to, to Elohim. And Elohim heard their groaning. And Elohim remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. Elohim saw the people of Israel, and Elohim knew. <coughs> Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Hir the Horeb, the mount of Elohim. And the angel of Yahuwah appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When Yahuwah saw that he turned aside to see, Elohim called out to him from the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the Elohim of your father, the Elohim of Abraham, and the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at Elohim. Then Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them out of the, land, out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of the land to, good, to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to Elohim, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children out of Israel, out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you, that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve Elohim on this mountain. Then Moses said to Elohim, If I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the Elohim of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask, What is his name? What shall I say to them? Elohim said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent you to me. Elohim also said to Moses, Say to this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and thus I am to be remembered throughout all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together, 
and say to them, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, has appeared to me, saying, I have observed you and what has been done to you in Egypt, and I promise that I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt to the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they will listen to your voice. And you and the elders of Israel shall go to the king of Egypt and say to him, Yahweh, the Elohim of the Hebrews has met with us. And now, please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice to Yahweh Elohim. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless compelled by a mighty hand. So I will stretch out my hand and strike Egypt with all the wonders that I will do in it. After that, he will let you go. And I will give this people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And then, and when you go, you shall not go empty. But each woman shall ask of her neighbor and any woman who lives in her house for silver and gold jewelry and for clothing. And you shall put them on your sons and on your daughters. So you shall plunder the Egyptians. Then Moses answered, Behold, they will not believe me or listen to my voice, for they will say, Yahweh did not appear to you. Yahweh said to them, What is that in your hand? You said, A staff. And he said, Throw it on the ground. So he threw it on the ground, and it became a serpent, and Moses ran from it. But Yahweh said to Moses, Put your hand on it and catch it by the tail. So he put it out his hand and caught it, and it became a staff in his hand. That may believe that Yahweh, the Elohim of their fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, has appeared to you. Again Yahweh said to him, Put your hand inside your cloak. And he put his hand inside his cloak, and when he took it out, behold, his hand was leprous, like snow. When, then Elohim said, Put your hand back inside your cloak. So he put his hand back inside his cloak, and when he took it out, behold, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. If they will not believe you, Elohim, or listen to the first sign, they may believe the latter sign. If they will not believe in these two signs or listen to your voice, you shall take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground, and the water that you ta shall take from the Nile will become blood on the dry ground. But Moses said to Yahweh, O oh, my Lord, I am not eloquent either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then Yahweh said to him, Who has made this? Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, Yahweh? Now therefore go, and I will be your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. And he said, O oh my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of Yahweh was kindled against Moses, and he said, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the, Le the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you. And when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be with your mouth. And with his mouth, it will teach you both what to do. He shall speak for you to the people, and he shall be your mouth, and you shall be as Elohim to him. And take in your hand this staff, with which you shall do these signs. Moses went back to Jethro, his father-in-law, and said to him, Please let me go back to my brothers in Egypt and to see whether they are still alive. And Jethro said to Moses, Go in peace. And Yahweh said to Moses and Midian, Go back to Egypt, for all the men who were seeking your life are dead. So Moses took his wife and his sons and then and had them ride on a donkey and went back to the land of Egypt. And Moses took the staff of Elohim in his hand. And Yahweh said to Moses, When you go back to Egypt, see that you do before Pharaoh all the miracles that I put in your power. But I will harden his heart so that he will not let the people go. Then you also shall say to Pharaoh, Thus says Yahweh, Israel is my firstborn son. And I say to you, Let my son go that he may serve me. If you refuse to let him go, behold, I will kill your firstborn son. At a lodging place on the way, Yahweh met him and sought to put him to death. Then Zephora took a flint and cut off her son's foreskin and touched Moses. Moses' feet with it. And said, Surely, <laughs> sorry, surely you are a bridegroom of blood to me, so let him alone. It was then that she said, A bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. Yahweh said to Aaron, Go into the wilderness to meet Moses. So he went and met him at the mountain of Elohim and kissed him. And Moses said, 
Moses told Aaron all the words of Yahweh with which he had sent him to speak, and all the signs that he had commanded him to do. Then Moses and Aaron went and gathered together the elders of the people of Israel. Aaron spoke all the words that Yahweh had spoken to Moses and did the signs in the sight of the people. And the people believed. When they heard that Yahweh had visited the people of Israel and that he had sent their affliction, they bowed their heads and worshipped. Afterwards, Moses and Aaron went and said to Pharaoh, Thus says Yahweh the Elohim of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. But Pharaoh said, Who is Yahweh? That I should obey his voice and let Israel go. I do not know Yahweh. And moreover, I will not let Israel go. Then they said, The Elohim of Hebrew has met with us. Please let us go a three days journey into the wilderness, that we may sacrifice the Elohim to Yahweh our Elohim. Lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said to them, Moses and Aaron, why do you take the people away from their work? Get back to your burdens. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land are now many, and you make them rest from their burdens. The same day Pharaoh commanded the taskmaster of the people of their foremen, You shall no longer give the people straw to make their bricks, as in the past. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. But the number of bricks that they made, in the past you shall impose on them. You shall by no means reduce it, for they are idle. Therefore they cry, Let us go let us go and sa offer sacrifice to our Elohims. Let heavier work be laid on the men that they may labor at it and pay no regard to lying words. So the taskmaster and the foreman of the people went out and said to the people, Thus says Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Go and get your the straw. Get your straw yourselves, wherever you can find it. But your work will not be reduced in the less. So the people were scattered throughout all the land of Egypt to gather stubble for straw. The taskmasters were urgent, saying, Complete your work, your daily task, each day, as when there was straw. The foremen of the people of Israel, from Pharaoh's taskmaster had set over them, were, be were beaten, and were asked, Why have you not done all your tasks of making bricks today and yesterday as in the past? And the foreman of the people of Israel came and cried to Pharaoh, Why do you treat your servants like this? No straw is given to your servants, yet they say to us, Make bricks. And behold, your servants are beaten. But the fault is in your own people. But he said, You are idle. You are idle. This is why you say, Let us go and sacrifice to Yahweh. Go now and work. No straw will be given, to, given you. But you must deliver the same number of bricks. The foreman of your people of Israel saw that they were in trouble when they said, You shall by no means reduce the, your number of bricks, your daily task each day. They met Moses and Aaron, who were waiting for them. And as they came out from Pharaoh, and they said to them, Yahweh, look on you and judge. Because you have made us stink in the sight of Pharaoh and his servants, and have put a sword in their hands to kill us. When Moses turned to Yahweh and said, O oh Lord, why have you done evil to this people? Why did you ever send me? For since I came to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has done evil to this people. And you have not delivered your people at all. But Yahweh said to Moses, Now you shall see what I will do to Pharaoh. For with a strong hand he will send them out, and with a strong hand he will drive them out of his land. Blessed art thou, Adonai Eloheinu, King of the universe, who gives the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Adonai, giver of the Torah. Brukata Adonai Eloheinu, Malach Alom, Asher Natal Lanu. Tered Mat Vaishye, Alom Natal Betekenu, Brukata Adonai Natin Hatra.